know, if you've watched this show before, you know these are colors I, you know, I'm not missing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I like to put unexpected things everywhere. I don't know, you ever remember being a kid and uh, playing with shadows on the wall and doing the little birds? <laughs> Hi, welcome to Give Your Wall Some Soul. I'm Shannon Grissom. Today we're doing part two of This Golfer Has Soul, but before we get started, I just have to tell you I'm so excited because our show won the Wave Award for Best Instructional Program, and these were shows that were submitted all the way from uh, the Rocky Mountains to Hawaii. And uh, we have an awesome crew, and it's due to all the people that work on the show that, that we won. So thank you everybody for all your help. And um, it, it was just a blast over at the Wave Awards in San Jose. Well, we're going back to the golfer. And today we're probably just going to work on her shirt that made her clothing may take the entire episode. Um, and it's kind of like this demo I was doing in San Jose where this gal kept looking at it and saying, I don't know, I don't know. She kept, she kept wondering if it was ever going to get anywhere. But it really will. So hang in there, guys, and watch this. What we're going to do is uh, tidy up things from last time. I noticed that uh, I, didn't, I didn't paint some of the background. I, you know, I just, toward the end, you know you get tired. So I'm going to clean up some of the areas in here. I'm going to start with the back part of her clothing, the black, because that'll be a quick, easy thing to do. So I'm not using too black. I'm going to mix that. I'm going to take some, uh, what am I going to take? Phthalo turquoise. Because that's one of the mother colors in the whole painting. I want to keep that consistent. And I'm going to add some quinacridone violet and make a rich, cool black. That's pretty. It's pretty black. And of course, oh, I love it when you scrape the palette and you can see all the color underneath. Sometimes I get a little sidetracked. But uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm going to use that for the dark. And I'm going to put that down on her visor right now. We want some instant gratification because I know you guys were watching a lot of background last episode. Okay, so I'm dipping my brush into the medium. And where are we going to start? Well, let's, let's get her, uh, her shorts blocked in. There's some dark right here. And it does have a bluish tinge, but that's okay. I really like this color. Need a little more medium there so that it flows better. Got to tell you, the Wave Awards were really nerve-wracking. They didn't call. Um, they didn't call our episode till the end of the show. We, you know, or, or our category. And we were named, we were, we were nominated in three of the four, three out of the four um, nominations for that category. And uh, so it was really cool. We're really excited. We think we have a pretty good chance. And um, when it comes time to announce the winner, they announce, they announce somebody else's name. And um, so I'm trying to be a good sport and clapping, and, but I'm, I'm disappointed. And then they came back and said, oh, we had a mistake that we tied so that, that Shannon Grissom and our, and our show actually gets an award. So I have to tell you, I smiled all the way down to that stage to get the award. It was great. OK, so we have some dark hair. I need to make some light. And how am I going to do that? <coughs> going to add some red to it. Surprise, surprise. So I'm going to move over a little bit of the pile. 
add some cad red light warm this up and that really didn't look like it did anything to that so I'm going to move even a little bit more because it, it's going to take a lot of that to warm that up there we go almost a brown color then I'm going to add the white if I added the white too soon it would be really gray and I can tell that you know I contaminated that white with a lot of blue so I'm going to have to maybe move that pile over now that's just grayer than I want so I'm going to add a little bit of red and a little bit of orange to that to warm it up cad yellow deep cad red light that's better that's a more a warm gray Okay, that looks good. And I'm going to use the same brush. I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit. Take a paper towel and wipe it off. And use a dirty brush on this. All right, so where do I see the lighter color? Right here. going to have to get darker as it goes down there so if you want form you have to have dark medium and light areas and this will read fairly black when I'm through but if you look at black it's really got a lot of different color in it okay and where else do I see this without having to mix a new color. I like to move around so that I don't have to keep mixing. So I noticed that uh, my drawing was a little off here. So this, is, this was actually part of the hat right here. So I'm just going to correct that. I think by the time I got to her hair, that was toward the end of the show. And I lost my place. That happens sometimes. Then I want to put some dark right next to it so that that visor turns going to give that visor some form form is important in golf and in painting it's important in a lot of things okay so that's a nice medium there I'm going to blend this together that's not dark enough rather than beat a dead horse here I'm just gonna fix that right away so you can see that it's slightly different a little bit lighter in there and then toward the bottom to give it some more form even though it doesn't show that it's darker in the painting, in the photograph, this is where there are things you know and things you do to make things look three-dimensional. Because in the photograph, it doesn't look darker here, but in or, or a lot darker anyway. But in order for it to look three-dimensional and look like that her leg is turning, you got to have a dark, medium, and light for that to work. So I'm putting that in. And you got to exaggerate it a little bit. You know, this is really cool because when I was a kid, well, even now as an adult, <laughs> I was kind of accused of being a little too much. You know, you're just a little too loud or a little too this or a little too that. Well, there's a reason I got that. And when you paint, if you add a little too much or a little too much of your personality in that, that's what makes it an interesting painting. So it all worked out. Okay, and that needs to be a little bit darker here. And I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time on, on this part. I really want to get to her jacket. That's going to probably take most of the show. All right, so where do I see some more dark, medium, and light? I'm, I'm not going to do the logo either on the, uh, on the hat because I don't, I'm concerned about trademark issues and... Uh, since I don't have permission, 
I'm not using it. Oops. That's all right. I, I totally went out of where I was going to go with the visor, but I can, I can clean that up later. Or if you're impatient and it just bugs you, you can take some clean liquid. This is a good way to, on a clean brush, and just push it up. But I'm not too worried about it. Just wanted to show you that there are options. There's always options. You can let it dry and work on it some more. You can cut it up, burn it, throw it out, <laughs> depending on your mood. I've cut up portions. I mean, people do this with watercolors all the time, but you can cut up a section of uh, an oil that works and, um, and frame that. All right, so that needs a little dark right in here. And if I don't wipe my brush off, there will be no difference and it won't work. So I'm going to put a little bit of dark right here. I'm going for some straight tube color because that's going to make the difference here. All right. And you can see how her visor is starting to turn. And by turn, I mean have form. Some of her hair will come out over this, and I'll, I'll fix that later. We're not doing hair that. That may, be, that may be part three. OK, so we have that basically blocked in. Now we need to start the jacket. And let's, well, I need a couple more dark spots here, and I'll be done. Got a little, little ahead of the game. There, that's better. Okay, what else did I notice before I get started? I don't want to lose my place. But I noticed that there's some of the background that needs to be in here. And if I don't put that in, that shirt's not going to make sense. So while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to do it. Because usually what happens is partway through the program, I get, I, get in, I get sucked into the painting. And I'll forget. I'll lose my place. Won't know where I'm at, what day it is. And... Um, I'll start painting in the wrong place. So while I'm thinking about it, and while I still have some left brain going on, as opposed to the right brain creative side, I'm going to fix it. So I'm going to take some sap green. And that was a fairly light area. Add a little bit of yellow ochre. And I'm going to move this over here. A little bit of white. Is that too light for that area? Not really. That's good. Good enough for right now. I'm going to take a different brush because this is warm. Totally different area of the painting. All right, so this comes down here like this. I'm just checking the drawing. And really what it does is right up here, So this whole thing comes out like this. Boy, I really got lost last time. It happens. It happens when I'm not on TV, too. OK, that's, that's sort of close. We've got this thing coming here. And I'll clean up some more later, but that gives me a better idea. I'm also going to clean up the little side where the club is. We'll probably do the club. Uh, I'm going straight into some yellow ochre. Probably do the club next time. I had to throw a little red in there. When it comes time to do the club, I will actually take a ruler and draw a straight, paint a straight line here. Because I do have trouble with straight lines. Okay, so that, that comes out here. And then her poor leg. 
We need to fix that. Okay. Now we've tidied this up a little bit. Better shapes. And I'm just going to throw a little red here. There. Okay, that's better. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the shadow side of her jacket in. And I can see last time where I actually threw some background color in here, that was a whoops. You know, it's just a, it's a matter of going back and forth and revising until I get it right. I hope that when I talk about errors I've made or, or directions I didn't necessarily want to go in, that it inspires you to create because they're just not perfect when you start out, or they're not always perfect. Um, they're seldom perfect. So you just keep going until you get them to the place that, that you're comfortable with. All right, so what do I want to do for the shadow side? I'm going to keep some of the green to her shirt, but I'm not sure I'm going to paint it that same color. So, but I will start with the, uh, the yeah, I'll start with that phthalo turquoise for the darks and add a little bit of that red to it, just because it's a nice dark. I may push it because I like the, the brightness of that turquoise. I may, I may push it toward that direction. So you can see that I'm starting out. I know what I'm going to do with the shadows, but I'm not sure what direction I'm going to go for the rest of it, for the lights and the medium colors. But that's OK. You just start with what you know, and hopefully by the time I get there, I'll figure it out. I don't always have a plan. OK. There's some dark right here. That's better. Cover up that background. Where else do I see it? It's these dark, dark and medium shapes that are going to help define this whole thing. So really what I'm doing right now is, is doing some sketching. OK, where else do I see? She's just got a, I'm just going to go ahead and sketch the jacket in. Follow those pencil lines lightly. Pay attention to what's going on here. There's some dark there. I see that her pants go right up here, and I missed that before, so I'll fix that. And you can see a little bit of her pants right here. All right, what else is going on? She's got this dark shadow part of the jacket here. There's definitely shadow going on here from the club. At this point, I don't know a lot about golf, but I'm learning. Going to start taking lessons. She was very patient with me out on the course. Great model. Nice lady. OK. While I was there, now once I start golfing, I won't be able to do this. But once, while I was out there, I was able to take all kinds of pictures. This was out at Richmark Country Club in Hollister. And I was able to take all these pictures. The leaves were turning. It was just gorgeous. Uh, once I really get serious about the game, I'll be focused on that and not Initially, I won't be able to take pictures, but this was great. I got some good reference material. So you can see I'm, I'm painting only the, uh, I'm just basically sketching out the dark areas. This will help me expedite ke uh, painting the jacket and just blocking it in. I'm looking at all the little wrinkles. What does it do? I'm not even separate, because some of the dark areas, there's, there's a dark, uh, you know, a medium dark and a, and a lighter dark. I'm not even concerned with that right now. I'm just, if it's dark, I'm painting it, and then we'll, we'll put in the, the nuances later. OK, so let's see, right here it's shadowed. 
this part of her face. This is just an interesting, great tension that she has here going on with this pose. She did not pose. This was just a natural stance, so that's what I, I liked it even better because it was natural and not some fake thing. I'm even using a scruffy brush to draw with because I'm not concerned with details at this point. Not that you have to, but I'm just telling you that. I'm not, I'm not there yet. Okay, there's her glove. So all I'm asking myself, is it dark, is it light? Do I need to throw something in there yet? I'm probably attacking it a little faster than I would here than, uh, than at home because I, I really want you guys to be able to see some results. All right, so what's going on with this part? I, I totally got lost over here, so let's clean this up. There kind of goes a wrinkle here. It goes there, and actually there's some more background there, so I'm going to fix that. Throw that in. And what does that background shape do? It comes up like this, and then there's actually a darker, darker color, so I'm just going to cut off part of her jacket here. Then there's some dark hair. Sometimes it's easier just with one brush back and forth. Okay, that's better. And there's a little bit down here. This is a little dark. Picked up some of the green, but that's okay. And then let's just see what the rest of this jacket does. They had some great clouds that day. It looked like it was going to rain, but it never did. And it was late afternoon, nice breeze going. Not too many people out, so it was safe for me to start swinging the club. Or at least safer, <laughs> safe for the people around. Okay. That's really light, so I'm not touching that. There's a little wrinkle of your thing there. That's a technical term, wrinkly thing. Okay, and I'm going to clean up this. What does this shape do here? Back to the... Uh, I'm filling in all these things as I go. Okay, this is light. You need light against dark for this to work. Okay, now it's time to throw in, I think I'll take that gray while I've got it on my brush, and throw in some of these snaps. Now, you could meticulously get a tiny brush and put all the nuances that were in the snaps. But if you've seen the show before and you know me, you know that makes me tired. <laughs> so I'm going to put some strokes, put some light over the top of that, and that ought to work for, for a first statement. So here's one, and this isn't even going to be perfectly round, just scruffy. Okay, let me just tell you one thing I did where, where, uh, that I could have done differently. It would have been easier to put the background color first and then put this gray over the top of it. Um, so now I'm going to have to paint over those little, those little things. So I may obscure those just because I don't, I'm not going to want to have to do that. Okay, but even with just this little bit of dark placed, you're starting to get a sense of what this jacket's going to do. All right, so now I need, um, I'm going to go ahead and put a lighter color, fill in everything, and then put the medium over the top. So I'm going to grab some white. Whoa, gravity. And it, it already has that blue in there, so I think we're just going for it. I'm going to grab a little bit of this cad yellow. Okay, I have very little cad yellow deep on the brush or on the knife because that will just def definitely take over. Okay. 
That reminds me, I don't know what it reminds me of, but I don't like it. So I'm adding a little more blue to it. That's better. See how powerful this blue is? It just takes over. I didn't add very much. Okay, how's this? It's probably too dark. So I'm going to move some of this over, set it aside like you would in a cooking show, and add this white to, whoa, <laughs> add some white to the palette. See, they're turning into can candid camera where they've got some guy under here that I can't see that's actually turning the palette just to see what I, just to see what I'd do. Okay, that's better color. So sometimes it takes a bit of mixing before you get what you want. How big a brush can I get away with? This might be a little too big, but it might not. You always want to try the biggest brush you think you can get away with. And try that first, see if it works. Almost slightly uncomfortable. All right. How do I feel about that? It's too yuck. It's a good, it's a good medium color, but I'm going to go with some straight white and some straight cad yellow deep for the, for the lightest lights. Otherwise, they will become obscured. So I need to, I'm going to knead my tube because it's, it's a new tube of white. Otherwise, I'm going to get all oil and no pigment. And I'm going to add just cad yellow deep to it. Even though you see that it's a, a green jacket, it needs that warmth in order for it to work. So I'm going to put some of that white down there. Add just a hair, I mean just a tiny bit of the yellow to that. Even that's taking over. Not like the Indian yellow, though. Not too bad. Okay. All right, that'll work. I'm going to put that down and put the other on top of that. Whoa. There was, <laughs> there was this huge dust cloud from the paper towel. Okay, this is better. Now, exactly where, right where I, where I put the paint in the first place is where I want this. I'm going to scrape off some of that. There. And I'll come up on that area last because I don't want to contaminate it with that area. Let's just put that in. And so I'm going to put this in the very light areas and then put the blue over the top. I want to get that quality of light that you see out there on the course. I've got a painting I'm working on at home. I should bring that in next time and show you, but I'm really excited because I was able to get, you could totally feel how it was that time of day out there. There's another artist in, um, in my hometown of Hollister, um, Kathleen Sheridan. She does really beautiful work and and she one of her the coolest thing she does is she's able to get the quality of light and a really good sense of place love her work okay that's better painting around the club And you know, you, you can't do this without kind of contaminating the color here. It just happens. And right now it looks really choppy because we haven't blended anything yet and it's very rough. That's okay, it'll get better.
Well, that's why I say I think today we're probably going to work just on clothing. And next time we'll get her, if, if we can get that far, we can get her, her, her skin blocked in. And then next time we'll, we'll get the painting to a better sta second statement. So I'm filling in. Now that, that was totally in the wrong place. I'm going to stop there and maybe put in this secondary color. You know, I was thinking about Kathleen Sheridan's work. I do get inspired by other artists. I see what they do, and I go, wow, that's cool. How fun it would be to try that. Or uh, sometimes I look and just know that that's not where I can go. Um, but I really appreciate that they do a certain thing. OK, and is there more light here? The only other big light spot I see is like right here. And I'm going to wipe out this. That doesn't need to be there. It can't live there. And it's going. And let's see, we got this here. Now I'm going to put in some of the medium colors here. All right. That's better. All right, so right in here is a little, little darker. Still not very dark, but it is. Where else do I see things that are shaded? Along about this side. Again, I'm not worried about cleaning up the edges. We'll do that later. There's light right in there. So I'm going to take a big blob of light and put it in. And just leave it. Because if I fuss with it, it'll be gone. Okay, so that area there, and this is a little darker. And right now, it just looks very abstract, little, little shapes, but it'll start taking shape. It will start looking like something. If you get the right shapes, you can get the texture of the fabric. There's a whole book on folds and what they do. And really, folds and anything, anything that's clothing is, uh, anytime you have any fabric, it's definitely affected by what's underneath, whether it's a body or whether it's a table. So the form underneath is going to determine what, what that fabric does. And then, the, and then the type of fabric, whether it's stiff or whether it's um, a loose flowing fabric, this is going to depend on how it hangs. So it's important to pay attention what, what you're doing. And if you, if, but if you put the shapes right, you can, you can get that look. This jacket is definitely, you know, it's, it's stiffer. OK. I'm kind of blending as I go. Now I see this, this little shape here. I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit. And sometimes it's a case of just breaking down some of the shapes. I made them too big. I'm just going to clean that up. And what else is going on here? A little darker there. Let me get this brush out of your way. Okay, a little bit of light right in here. Now right on this side under here is darker. And I, I should have left a, a white space here, and I didn't. So I'm going to try and go over the top. It might work. It might not. And if not, I let it dry, and then I fix it later. I left it thick enough that it will work. 
It's not quite the shape that, that I wanted, but it, it'll work. Okay. That was a little too dark for there, but that's all right. I will wipe my brush off and blend it a little bit. And this needs to be lighter, but it's too muddy. I don't think I can do anything with it. I'm going to move on to some of her other areas. Let's say, let's just talk about this little, uh, these little buttons. Put in light over the top. And I think because I put them in and I made a mess, I'm just going to paint over them and put them in again. You can do that, you know. We'll just pretend I did not do that. And yep, that's darker than I'd like it, so I will have to go over it later. But it's easier than painting around the buttons. This is one of those deals where I just admitted my mistake <laughs> and, and take steps to correct it, and you have to just wait until it dries before you can fix it. So I'm scraping that off. Why? Because I don't want to have to work around thick paint later. Okay, she's got a white shirt under there. Do we want to put that in? Yeah, we'll, we'll get that basically locked in. And I'm going to get away from the painting and say, okay, it is starting to take shape. That's good. I want to put in her blouse before I lose that, uh, that shape and then go back to making something out of the jacket. I'm going to overstate this, and that way I, I won't lose the white later. Okay, so basically what I do is I have this blocked in, and right now it's pretty much a mess. So I'm going to blend everything and then reinstate the darks and it, it will start looking like a jacket. So get a clean brush for blending. And I like a little brush that's stiff because you really want to kind of scrub this thing. So I'm looking for just the right, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a brush that is short has a short, uh, it's more of a flat brush rather than a long filbert. And that way I'll have more control because at this point I do want a little more control. All right, so what do I want to do? I want to blend this. You can actually hear it because it is a scrubbing kind of brush. And that's a little lighter in here. So I'm blending and then wiping right after that. If I don't, then it'll just be a big mess. I'll have too much paint on my brush. All right, so there's a little, little bit dark hair. That shape's just way off, so I'll fix that. And I've discovered as I was blending that I just need a little, there's some areas that need to be a little darker. So I'm gonna address that, make that a little bit darker here. I need more of a mid, except that's too gray. I'm not happy. Just because it looks gray in the photo doesn't mean I want it in my painting. She's a very vibrant person. We don't, we don't want a lot of gray around her. I'm 
Okay, that's better. It's a darker shape. I'm blending that. I want to tone down this, this little blob. And I just keep asking myself, what are these shapes? Are they dark? Are they light? This is more of an in-between. So I need to blend that. If you can keep your values straight, and um, no, I'm not preaching. This is, <laughs> if you can keep your values as far as dark and light, then the whole thing will work. Sometimes I'm better at that than others. But it's always an intent. Okay, that needs to be way, like, really, really light. Overboard light in order for that to work. So I'm going to put, put it down and leave it. Making it bigger than I need it to be. And that way when I blend it, it won't be gone. And what do I have here? There's another light spot. This is when I get out about 10 brushes. Okay. So this is light. That's light. And then put the darks back in. So it's just a matter of adjusting. Oops. Okay, what's going on here? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> I ask the painting that every time. Where am I? What, what's going on here? What are you doing? What do I need to convey? Is it dark? Is it light? Is it dull? Is it bright? With here, right now, at this point, I'm more concerned with value than anything else. So I'll put in the fun color later. This is just too dark up here for what's going on, so I'm going to put in the light right over the top. And some more light right here. I don't know why I put the dark in there. I wish I could tell you. What was one of those? What was I thinking? Okay, then I will blend. So first, you have to play with the ugly and just make big blobs and know that it goes through an awkward adolescent stage before it blossoms. Okay, so this half is starting to take form. It's starting to uh, congeal. Let's see, we'll throw some dark down here just, just to add a little, add a little brush hair there. That's fine, that add character. Now, a brush hair here and there is fine, but if you're, if you got more brush hair than paint, then you better throw out the brush. Okay. So this is dark, this is more of a medium. So is this. This isn't that light. I just keep adjusting. Now what's going on over here? Because we need to work on this side, so I keep moving. And I'm not wiping enough, so I need to do that. And I'm going to start blending this little fold area here. And I also want to get rid of that pencil line. So sometimes I kill the painting in little areas knowing that I will clean it up later. Uh, this is cleaned up here. This needs to be a little bit blended. That's better. I'm just going to knock down this edge so it's not so harsh. 
throw this in. So basically, I'm just using my blending brush. I'm not adding any more paint at this point. And you can probably hear by the, by the scrubbing, I'm adding a, quite a good amount of pressure. I am actually teaching classes over at the country club where she's where she was posing. And so if you're interested about information about classes or any other thing I can do, you can always check out my website. Okay, so as I'm blending here, again, the object is not to have a perfect thing because this is just the first statement. The object is to get the darks and lights in, the, in reasonably the right place and blended so that when I go back in later, I've got a good map of where I want to go. There aren't huge ridges that I'm going to have to overcome, especially if they're in the wrong place because you know that happens. I know that some of the light is definitely gets, gets obscured and gets knocked down in this process, and that gets put in again over the top. So that in the final episode, which is the next one that we'll do, you'll see how we finish that. I'm going to add some light and see what I can do about, uh, let's put some buttons in here. That's good enough. I'm going to put some light over the top and see what I can do about getting that to a nice first statement stage. This needs to be lighter. I'm just going to knock that whole thing down. Boy, that's a little overstated, that dark there. You just see things the more, <laughs> the more you do. And I picked up some extra blue on my brush that I didn't want, so I'm wiping that off, moving on. Now what I'd like to do is see if I couldn't just quickly, and I may have, to do, I may have time to do that, because basically with this, I'm not a wet on wet painter, so I would let this dry before I do anything else to it. Um, maybe throw in a few more lights, but you're starting to get a sense of form here. It's starting to look like a jacket. It's starting to, um, to uh, look three-dimensional. So I'm going to put in a few more lights, and I'm going to move on to the skin tone so that when we get to part three next time, you'll see the whole thing finished. Our tendency is to play with something until you get it exactly where you want it. And also, there's a time to know that, you know what, you can't do anything more and you've got to let it rust. And that's where we are right now. Let's see. So I'm going to throw these in and then we'll be done. Light there. Light here, a little light here. Where else do I need to reinstate the light? I need to get some more white on my palette. See how I was talking about not being able to leave things alone? Okay, well, we're getting toward the end of the show. So I'm going to have to put a little bit of light down. Let's see if I can't just put in the dark medium light of her, of her skin tone. All right. Well, let's try some shoes since, <laughs> since we have to keep going. There's some light here. Same thing. I'm just looking for light, medium, and dark. And I'm going to do differently on the shoes what I should have done with the buttons, where I'm just going to cover them all with a basic, one basic color and one basic value. Lights in the one place, darks in the other, and put the stuff on top. Now, it looks like she's sinking into the grass. And once we 
put the grass coming up here. It won't, it won't look like she's melting, but uh, right now it does. And if you can't laugh about the different stages of your painting, you, you're going to be in trouble. And I have a feeling it's going to be the same thing when I start learning golf. Okay, I'm going to add a little violet because we haven't done anything like that today. And I'm ready. And God knows we could use some red, but that's coming. Okay, so there's some shadowy side right here. Are her shoes purple? No, but I like it. Okay, this is, that's where the shadow is, is right there and there. A little bit of shadow here. That's enough base information. Okay, do you think we can uh, throw in some skin tone in the last few minutes? Maybe. I'm going to try. So for the light, it'll be cad yellow deep and white. For the medium, cad red light. Add yellow medium and some purple. Oh, that's yucky. I need <laughs> I need to add a little white to that. I'm running out of room, clean room on my palette here. Try to tone that down with a little blue. That's better. Much better. Light, medium, and then for the dark, I think I'm going to try, we'll just see, a little yellow ochre and some Carver's All Violet. That's a little too purple. I'll throw some red in, just because I'm going through red withdra withdrawal. Oh, that's better. I'm pre-mixing first because this is going to be an expeditious way of getting it down. And I have to like it here before I hit the canvas. Okay, that's a nice, rich, warm, dark, way over the top, which is perfect for me. We'll make a nice medium. Does it work with what's here? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit warmer on that. Maybe not quite that much. Okay, that's good. We're going to put in three basic tones, dark, medium, light, and that's it. All in just a few minutes. Okay, so quickly, where's the dark? And right now, for this part of her, the whole part of her face here is just going to be dark. It's one big dark blob. We'll put in the other stuff later, but I'm just looking at her value here. That's, that's good. That's dark. Where else is, is it dark? Right under her chin. Got to be careful about making things look too dark. The older a person is, the darker it is under their chin, so you really don't want to overdo that. Make people look older than they are. I think she's younger than me, so I don't want to do that. Okay, there's that. And I'm going to put a little little, uh, little shadow side there. Where else do I see dark? Right around the top of her lip. And... Okay, so we got a little more dark here. This is going to be the fastest application of skin you ever saw. Where else am I seeing dark? Just uh, on her hands. People get fussy about hands. Just look for the dark, medium, and the light. 
There's a glove there we won't have time to address today. And I'm just looking for the dark. That's actually got some reflected blue there that I'm going to have to just put in because I can't leave it. And then that's really dark over there. If you see people, in, and, and instead of thinking about a face or whatever the feature is, if you see them in terms of dark, medium, and light, you're going to be able to make them look three-dimensional. Okay, I'm going to put the light in now. And we'll sneak up on the rest. I need lots of medium because that will make the paint flow faster in the time that we have. And let's see, you know what, this part of her face, I'm just, I'm not putting in her, her mouth or anything, I'm just, I want to know where the, the center line is, but I'm just concerned about what's dark and what's light and what's not. I'll blend that later, 